Hello, this is Mr. Doty again, and this is part two of the sectioning videos that I'm working on. Um, apparently, Blackboard doesn't like really long ones, and so I've broken this up into at least two videos, maybe more. And uh, in this one, we're going to go over the uh, PowerPoint and talk about the uh, you know different areas of sectioning. So, under teaching aids, um, I have the PowerPoint right here and you're gonna we're gonna go through it and talk about it and I also have a, an example of one of the drawings to kind of show you what I'm looking for alright so we'll catch you later and enjoy the video hey there we go alright so chapter 12 sections revolutions and conventional breaks aren't we excited Okay, so basically the whole idea of this video is to help you to better understand sectioning and uh, be able to give me, who's going to be checking your drawings, uh, or whoever is doing the class checking your drawings, uh, what we're looking for as far as assignments and to teach you stuff that you're going to use out in the real world. So uh, proper cutting plane line representation, sectional views including full, half, aligned, broken out, auxiliary, revolved, and removed sections. Identify features that should remain unsectioned in a sectional view. And you're like, what? It'll make sense, promise. Uh, prepare drawings with conventional revolutions and conventional breaks. Uh, the conventional breaks, what I was talking about with the pipe. Modify standard sectioning techniques as applied to specific situations. As usual, there's always exceptions to a rule. Uh, where you can make adjustments. Uh, kind of like that pipe or that flange where I'm wanting you to make an alternate view over here using a viewing line instead of a cutting line even though they're basically the same thing. Make sectional drawings from given engineer sketches and actual industrial layouts. Well, that's what the assignments are going to do. Um, so sectional views are created by it's like if you went over to a saw and you cut into a part and you were looking at the inside of the part, like you physically cut it. Um, it's going to describe the interior portions of an object, expose hidden lines that you cannot dimension to, so that you can see them and, as you can see right here, dimension to them. Because number one rule in dimensioning, I would go with number one rule, avoid, do not, don't pass go, don't collect $200, do not dimension hidden features. That includes holes. Sure, you're dimensioned to the center line, but still, it's a hidden feature. Don't do it. You'll get marked off every time. Okay, so there are ASME standards that go along with sectioning. You've got the 14.3 and the 14.2, uh, multi and sectional views, and then line conventions and lettering. Uh, those are the two areas that are concerned with this. Okay, so cutting plane lines. Uh, a cutting plane line can, is, is what we use to show how we're cutting the, um, the object. And this gives you a really good understanding uh, of what we're doing. You've got this area, this little pocket that you can't see with solid lines, so I can't dimension to it. And uh, it's not really a counter bore. It's not a counter sink, you know, anything like that that I could put on a note for the hole. Um, at least not this part, okay? So I need to have this section. So what we did is we did a full section. They cut it all the way across. Notice that the uh, arrows are pointing away from it. Uh, I'm going to make a video on how to make the, the arrows correctly or how I do it in AutoCAD, and you can go from there. Um, like I said, a lot of the examples they show are set up vertically but I would like to to be horizontal so that you know and I really didn't want to rotate this picture and mess up the lettering so but you know I would run my views you know left to right uh, now they did a top view which is fine um, I would have done a side view and put my line this way because it's a fairly symmetrical part even though it's square All right. Um, so you've got two options. You can either use a thick uh, hidden line, which is just a bunch of dashes, or 
you can use the um, phantom line, which is long, short, short, long, and you keep, you know, keep that pattern. And then you have arrowheads. And typically the arrowheads are larger than the ones that you're going to use for your dimensioning. Let's just say that typically it's about two times bigger. I don't really have a good standard for that. I'd have to go back and look. But over the years, that's the way I was taught. And what it would come down to is whatever the standard is for the company you're working for. And then again, you also have things like, you know, you have SOLIDWORKS, you have Inventor, uh, those kinds of programs where they've already got that programmed in. And it should make it thicker and, you know, apparent that it's a cutting plane or viewing plane line. All right. And it's going to show the direction you're cutting. And your view that you show is always, um, well, let's just put it this way. The arrows always point away from the view of the section that you're going to make. So your section view is always on the opposite direction of the arrows. All right? Arrows point away from the section view. All right. Beat that dead horse. So um, something to remember we talked about lines and precedence. So cutting plane lines, they cover center lines. Because remember, the center line is kind of the low man on the totem pole, uh, kind of the forgotten line. Uh, so you may need to delete a center line or readjust it for a center mark uh, so that you don't have these lines overlapping and it looks funny and you can't tell that it's a cutting plane line. So an obvious cutting plane shows only the ends of the cutting plane line. Or you have no cutting plane line, which is really weird. But you can do that. But I don't... In the things we're going to do, I want you to draw one so that you get in the habit of understanding what a, 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 a viewing plane, cutting plane line looks like. And then uh, you're going to show the cutting plane line if in doubt. Well, I just... That's my default right there. You show it that way. I know if it's a half, a, a offset, or whatever it is. I want to know where I'm cutting through. Now, obviously, if it's a full section of a round part, that's pretty simple to figure out if it's you know full or half. All right, moving along, we have some pictures. And this is what they're talking about. So you can also make, typically, this is what we call a viewing plane line. But like I said, a cutting plane line, there's actually three variations. You've got the phantom version, you've got the hidden version, and then you have this little L version where I don't have anything in between these two lines. So, you know, you can make this and then mirror it down, and you've got the other side, and that's technically a cutting plane slash viewing plane line. So here's an example of where they didn't put one in. I would still do it just because it's a good habit to get into. Uh, and it definitely emphatically says, hey, I've got this done. That's what it is. This is a section. All right. And um, here's an example of where we have a removed section uh, showing the section down here. And it's listed to see AA, BB. So here's A, A, and B, B. On a regular section, you don't have to label it that way if you don't want to. Some people do. They'll, they'll do a half section or a full section, and they'll label it that way. And then under the view over here, you know, the side view, they'll put, um, you know, section A, A. Uh, if it's on another sheet, that's how you have to do it. And that, this covers that here in a minute. So uh, when you're talking about identifying the sections, especially if they're removed or on another sheet, um, we're going to start out with AA, and letters that you avoid are I, obviously, because it looks like a 1, uh, O, because it looks like a 0, Q, close enough, uh, S, I guess because it looks like an 8, I'm not sure, uh, X and Z. Not exactly sure why it would matter on those either, but hey, I didn't make this uh, PowerPoint. I just adjusted it. So anyway, uh, you're gonna you you can use double letters like it could be A A A A if you had to. I'm not exactly sure why you would have that many sections, but hey, you never know.
So moving along, uh, poor sectioning practices. Okay, so here are things not to do. Do not take a section from a section. Uh, don't project off of a section view. Always, um, and this is what happens in SolidWorks and Inventor. Uh, and I get more SolidWorks drawings because I teach a class just in that. But I'll have people that will make their three views and then they'll make a section view over here. No, you delete or don't create this side view and you go tell it to make a section view and that replaces where your side view would actually be. That is the correct practice. So we don't take a section from a section. You have to take a section from an actual solid view and we don't project any other views off of a section view because it is a, you know, it's a special view in itself. So if you can keep that straight, we'll be in good shape. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. So section lines. Um, they're typically at uh, some kind of variation of 15 degrees. Uh, they're not going to be horizontal. They're not going to be vertical. Uh, you want to try to keep them from being parallel or perpendicular to the lines of your view. They should be equally spaced. Uh, a typical setting, which is shown here, is uh, a 16th or 1.5 millimeters. Honestly, you just need to have enough of them so that it, it looks, and, and you'll figure it out. I'll give you an idea. I've got an example drawing to show you that uh, kind of shows that. All right. Um, on an assembly drawing, which you'll see here in a minute, uh, you want to change directions of your views. Uh, I'm sorry, of your section lines. And uh, you're going to omit text around, uh, when necessary to have um, omit around text when necessary to have text. In other words, the text is going to uh, wash out where the uh, section lines are, or you'll put a little, you know, blackout there, or what we call a wipeout in AutoCAD. And what that does is the text will it'll have a space around it so that it's easier for you to read the text. If you have to have text inside on labeling a view. For some reason, I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure that you would. Uh, architectural drawings, you might, but anyway. Okay, uh, moving along. So here's an outline section lining. Uh, in the old days, when we didn't have CAD, uh, we got lazy and we sped things up by just doing a little bit of our hatch pattern, you know, or sectioning. I never did. I always drew all of them, but that's just because that's how I was taught. Uh, but this is just an example of outline section lining. You're going to use, you're going to fill in the whole thing because you're just going to use the hatch command. It's pretty simple. Um, now, there are patterns for different materials. You're going to find that out uh, in, um, I don't remember if, which class it's in, but in one of the classes you go through and you talk about the different kind of materials. Uh, I think it may be in 102. And yeah, it is. It's in 102. And we talked about some of the different um, materials and the different hatch patterns that they have for doing sections. Okay. I'm not going to make a big deal out of you picking the exact correct um, hatch pattern. My main goal is that if you're drawing something that is an assembly drawing, uh, Make sure that the parts where they intersect, you know, they come together. They're going to have hatch patterns that are at different angles. You might even use different hatch patterns just to break it up so that you can tell which part is which. This is only how, that's how it works on an assembly drawing. You'll also notice that uh, bolts and shafts, uh, washers, I believe that's a washer or a gasket in there. Those aren't shown sections. Uh, it's just a 
thing that we do. It helps to break things up so that you don't have too much information and have a really busy drawing. Okay, that's mostly what it is. Um, basically, like I was saying, things that are really thin, you know, like a um, a gasket or a uh, washer, you know, you're not going to section those either. Uh, or they can be drawn without section lines. All right. So uh, full section. Here we go. A full section is where you cut all the way across, like so. Notice the arrows are pointing away from my section view. Like I said, I would like things to be horizontal when you draw them, okay? That way it looks better on the sheet, or whatever sheet size that you pick. A half section, you're going to take a quarter of it. Instead of slicing all the way through it, you're going to slice halfway through it, right? And you're going to remove a quarter of the information out there. And it's used to show this here. And like I said earlier, um, you could say that you could have a dimension from here over to here that tells how far in they need to go from this point here. So they would zero their tool on this diameter and then add whatever that distance. I can see that. Uh, I could also see if you did a full section and you gave them that full diameter that they would be a little happier. So sometimes a quarter sec or a half section really doesn't help as much as um, we might have been led to believe. How about that? But here's the idea. Now, I've always been taught that you have the arrow pointing this way. This is showing the direction of it. But there's usually, or at least what I was taught, we always had an arrow pointed down here. You can go either way. Like if you just put this one, this is showing that I'm looking this direction, that's fine. But you could also have one going down. And that's just what I was taught. And that may be like the old um, standard. And this is the new standard. I don't know. I'd have to look in um, SolidWorks to see what it does. Because they usually have the standards pretty close. Or uh, pretty updated in there. Alright, so that's a half section. Now this one kind of confuses people sometimes. Where, you know, you're doing an offset. And basically what I'm doing is up here I'm showing the path. Notice that I go all the way through the feature that I want to show, and then I move up or forward, you know, up or back, whichever, and then go through the center of the next feature and over. And I try to do it kind of in between the features, you know, before I move up or down or left or right, whichever direction you're at. And uh, see, now this kind of drawing here, this kind of part, you could get away with doing a top and a uh, front view here. That would be okay because it's not a really long part or you know really big part that it actually takes up a lot of space and you could dimension it and it would make a nice pretty drawing. Okay, this example over here, what they've done is this is it's on an arc basically, but they've done their you know they're showing that they're still looking this way and what they've done is this kind of rotated up to here if you will to get um, that alignment to show that how that is doing its thing so basically they're running along this center line or this hidden line and then they come down and they go over but when they show it they're basically rotating this over to where it's parallel with this uh, viewing plane line, okay? You don't have to do anything like that one, so it won't be too confusing for you, hopefully. Yours is more like this. All right, now, I rotated this because I wanted you to have a better idea of the fact that I need things sideways, okay? I need them horizontal. You know, I need them landscape. Um, Basically, they had this down on the bottom, and this was on top, and I was like, no. But the idea is still the same. This is what we call an aligned section. An aligned section means that I have this symmetrical part, but I want to make it look like I did a full section of it. I don't want to draw it where I see this, you know, rotated down here, because 
technically that's not true shape and size. It's not a true position of it because it's over here. It's not lined up with, whoops, it's not lined up with my um, axis right here. Okay? So when I do an align section, a lot of times you're going this direction and then rotating it here, but it doesn't really matter. The whole point of it is I'm facing away from my arrows point away from my section view and I just take this and I line it up or align it if you will uh, so that it looks like this right here. So hopefully <laughs> that isn't too confusing for you. Alright so here are some things that you do not have to section. Bolts, nuts, rivets, screws, rods, shafts, ribs, I'll show you why here in a minute, webs, spokes, bearings, gear teeth, pins, and keys. And you're going, oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We're doing a wheel and it's got a spoke. Well, we have to see what the cross section of that spoke is. Uh, and we're using a revolved section to do that, which we'll move along to here in a minute. So in general spokes you don't have to. You don't show them in like a full section I guess is what you want to say. They can be though um, you can do a revolve section if you need to see the cross section of that piece. Here's some more examples that are shown vertically and uh, basically what they're doing is I don't know why they have three views. I guess they're just wanting to show you what it looks like. Um, so they did this view and then they did this view. I mean technically you really only need two views. You do the section view and this view and then you know that would be rotated up here and it would be over here. So I'm a little confused as to why that even matters. And um, this example, they don't even have this view right, so I'm not exactly certain what the deal is. It should have looked more like that. Uh, I don't understand how <laughs> sometimes when these people do these you know, examples. Anywho, um, intersections in section. Basically what they're trying to show you is what does a hole look like in a section or where something meets in a section. And I'm not quite sure what the difference, this right here, why it's any different, but anyway, um, you know, they're just showing you how it cuts into the part and how it would look. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure that that's... Oh, well, yeah, as you go away from the center of the part, yeah, this would move, this line would move down some. Anyway, so yeah, so just be aware of the, remember when you project stuff to just think about it. Made me think about it, so there you go. All right, so conventional revolutions, and you're like, what? We talked about this. We said webs or... Um, Let's see, it's it's a web, it's a, here, let's back up. What did it say that you don't section? Spokes, webs, and ribs. Okay, so think of this as a web. This is a spoke, right? Uh, sometimes these might be considered ribs, but it's a web. So when I draw this, I rotate this down and align it, but I don't section it. I'm going to section this part. I don't know why they didn't show this sectioned like they should have, you know, but they didn't. Uh, but basically when I draw the view, I don't want to draw it like this. I want to draw it like this because it doesn't look weird. And 
this is true shape and size. It's not foreshortened. This is foreshortened, which is not a good practice. Okay, seeing things not the right shape and size is really not an appropriate way to, to show your parts when you're trying to throw dimensions on there and so on. All right, so here's our spoke, uh, same idea like this. Now, if I needed to do a cross section of one of these, I could do that, but I'm still not going to section the rest of it. Okay, so that's kind of the difference in what we're talking about here. All right, so that's a conventional revolution. Now, this is the one where they had a completely horribly wrong example. So I went and found some better ones. Uh, this is an example of a broken out section. So you take a short break line and you just draw that in. And then you just hatch the areas that you need to show. So basically I just need to break this out so that if there wasn't another view where I could dimension this hole, I can dimension it here. I can at least locate it, right? Uh, because this kind of a, of a part I'd basically do this view and a top view and I'd be done. Well, I can't dimension this hole without doing like a side view that is really not necessary unless I did a partial view. So I can just do a broken out view and then I can use a leader to dimension, you know, to label what the hole is, um, whether it's threaded or not. And then I can have a dimension from the top down or the bottom up, whichever my, um, datum plane that I'm using. See, you remember datum planes. Where am I dimensioning from? You need to think about that and dimension from the same ones on each view. You know, if you're going to draw, you know, if you're going to dimension from the bottom and the left side and the front, then those are the planes that you need to dimension from in each of your views. So, in this case, let's say I was going from the bottom, I'd have a dimension from here up to the center of that located on the side over here. And, um, and then I would have a note with a leader showing, hey, this is how big it is. Now, in this kind of view, they don't get rid of the hidden lines. In a regular view, like a half section, I didn't mention this earlier, but you actually get rid of all hidden lines in a section view. However, if it's a broken out section, you leave the hidden lines in because you need them. And you just make solid the places where you cut. Okay, So it's like I took a hammer and I knocked a corner out of this and I can see the material. That's basically what it is. This one's the same idea. They want to show this undercut. and Again, on dimensioning, I'm kind of baffled why you wouldn't want to have this uh, fully shown here. You know, break it all the way down so that I could see this and dimension both this and get a diameter on it. But, again, you could take the dimension here and here and do that. Uh, it would also be possible, I don't know that it's actually wrong, that you... Uh, had a leader and pointed to it and said, hey, it's this diameter. It's just an alternate way of thinking about dimension. But, you know, I think about those things trying to think, that doesn't make sense. But, you know, I remember doing it and being taught that and I'm like, but if I was a machinist, I want to know what this diameter is and I want to know what this diameter is. Because this is like a reverse counterbore. <laughs> But this is showing me what it looks like on the inside, and that's good to go. And I have my short break line right here. And then I have the side view. And see, this is aligned or lined up the way that I want to see it. I want to see things lined up horizontally as much as possible. Okay? All right, moving along. Auxiliary sections. Now, that pipe flange, the flanged pipe, you know, the arc, arced flanged pipe fitting, that would actually have an auxiliary <laughs> uh, view. Not an auxiliary section, but an auxiliary view. But the way I explained it earlier is I want us to do a removed view and 
stick it or an alternate view and stick it over here and we're going to put our viewing plane line up there lined up with that flange and if I have to do a special video to show you how to do that you know what I will I'm trying to make things better and easier so that you guys understand this stuff and I apologize we got a 45 minute video out of this but it is what it is sometimes lectures just take a long time okay so this is auxiliary section and basically what it is is it's not parallel to any of my other um, drawing planes so I go at the angle and then my view is parallel with my viewing plane line or cutting plane line okay and the same thing down here um, however on this one we moved or did a remove section and stuck it over here out of the way and then they did a partial view down here just to show this area and that way they could locate and dimension this counter countersunk hole uh, right there alright so that's an example of and we're going to do auxiliary views later on in this class so conventional brakes so basically what we're doing is shortening up something uh, if it's a solid like a square tubing and not tubing but square well it could be tubing uh, if it's something squared off then you can just do a broken short break line and you're done right or this jagged thing that looks like I broke it that's not the greatest this is better uh, another option is to do what we call a uh, conventional break and that's what this is uh, and like I said there should be an example of how to do it in the book and if that doesn't really make any sense then I'll make a video and add to it because I want you to figure out how to do this uh, I'll even try to figure out how to do it in SolidWorks so that you know something easy you can figure out how to do uh, they should have stuff like this in there because you know they need to cover all different areas you know, of views anyway so basically you've got one third of the radius is what this distance is um, and I forgot what the actual radius is of this I don't think it's that's what I don't think the centers are located right there but anyway uh, then you also have your long brake lines for when you have a part that's really really long and you want to use that but typically uh, we're going to do these short brake lines on a lot of our machine parts alright now revolved section I mentioned oops I mentioned something about a revolved section whoops sorry got carried away with the mouse a uh, revolved section is where uh, you've got a spoke or a bar or a beam or something that you want to do a cross section of and you can either do it like this where you do a broken out you know do your short break line and get rid of the material and just show the cross section of that piece or you can do it right on the part like that either way is legal uh, typically you would have a center line on it just to kind of show that you kind of rotated it on that center line 90 degrees so I could see what it looks like and that's just another handy way of showing those kinds of views you know that kind of you know geometry to see what it is and and you can dimension off of it as well and if you have it open like this it makes it easier easier to dimension so extrusions spokes beams arms those are all things that we can do revolved sections of we don't do a full section of them as I mentioned earlier but we can do a revolve section okay remove sections you're gonna have a drawing where you got two or three removed sections uh, you're gonna do like a left side or I'm sorry a right side and a left side view and then you're gonna have some sections in here that you're going to hey hey I have an AA here's section AA I've got section BB and put section BB down here and so on all right, reference arrow method for sectional view. Okay, I don't like this. I think this looks really goofy. Um, I'm not exactly sure what standard uses it, but you might run into it, so there it is. I want you to do it the other way we've been doing, and I kind of showed you. All right, uh, locating sectional views on different sheets. Now, it's very important that you label your sections, especially if you're going to do this. 
okay? Uh, it's just what you do. So if it's on this sheet here is your view with your section line, your cutting plane line, then your section's on a different sheet, sheet two, zone B3. Now we've talked about zoning, and this is a this is a use of it, where you've got it labeled like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, running up, up vertically, and then horizontally have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, in AutoCAD, I don't have you set up your um, paper that way, but in SolidWorks and Inventor, um, at least in Inventor, I know I'm pretty sure that it's set up as zones, and both of them maybe. I'm not exactly sure. All right, um, so um, trying to think what else. So anyway, that's his locating them on different sheets, and that is the end of that.